Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Rangers boss Mark Warburton says he doesn't need to splash the cash to compete with Celtic. We'll also have an update from the Rangers manager on Martin Wycorn. Uh, also tonight, Josh McGuinness has left Kilmarnock. He's joined Charlton for an undisclosed fee. And we're going to look back at last night's results in the Betfred League Cup and get the thoughts of Ruffy and our bookroom guest on the quarterfinal draw. And I'm delighted delighted to say Alawa midfielder Graham Holmes is indeed our guest here looking forward to um, a great tie against Celtic. Um, well, I mean, it's been absolutely unbelievable. Can you believe it yourself? Six wins out of six. It's been a great start, a great start to the season. Um, obviously, it's a draw that a lot of us would have been looking for, especially at Chilling. Um But it's, like you say, it's been a great start to the season. I think six out of six is the best we've had since I've been there, six years. So um, hopefully we can take that into Celtic again. Yeah, and the good news, Graham, you, you being 32, it's a wide Thanks. park and you and Jim Goodwin are going to be breathing <laughs> heavily <laughs> at Celtic Park. Well, I think Rob will have a, uh, something to say about that. Um, but yeah, I would love to be in there. But fingers crossed, Jim's fat enough anyway. He's a fat man, so I don't think he'll be worried about that. Yeah, the big question is uh, the Jack Ross, um, you know, magic. I mean, what is it about him that seems to have, and I, I'm not being in any way dismissive of what's gone before, but mm -hmm. he seems to have transformed you to another level. Um, communication. He's great at communicating. He makes sure we know exactly what he wants from us. Um, tempo of training's excellent as well. He's very good in and around the boys as well. So I think when um, a manager first when he goes for playing to managing um, a lot of them forget straight away what it was like to play but the gaffer seems to have remembered what it was like playing as well communicating simple things like letting boys know if they're not playing um, it's a massive thing to boys uh, rather than sit and wait and read the team sheet mm -hmm. and you're not on it you know, it's a. So, has he been chatting to you quite a lot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, yeah, how did Bush not get confident yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he has actually. Uh, <laughs> I wish he'd spoke to me less. It's yeah. strange, that, you know, those little things that mean so much. Yeah. And, and just picking up on that, Ruffy, the other key area here, which I'm going to get Graham's thoughts on, is is managers also talk about player recruitment. Yeah, and uh, every manager we've had in here for the Lord Division uh, has been so experienced to identify the kind of player he needs to get himself out of that mm. division. And uh, whether that means a style of player, a player coming in, mm. and it looks as if that's what he's done with, with yourself. You know, he's actually identified players who would suit the league that you're playing in, the style that the teams play, and that's how you're getting the benefit of it. Well, that's another thing as well. He signed very well. Um, obviously, last year it, it wasn't the Gaffers players, um, but this year he's he's got boys like Jordan Kirkpatrick, he's re-signed uh, Kevin Cawley, he's managed to keep Ian Flanagan, who, um, you know, I, I, well, I don't know why he's playing at this level. It's because he's had a lot of injuries in his career, but um, ability-wise, the three of them, you know, they could they could play at a higher level. Um and he signed players like this. He signed we boy Cal Waters from Celtic as well. He's you know, he's good. He's gave these boys a lot of confidence that maybe previous managers haven't. Um and they're flying so far. So Yeah. I, I know we joke about it, but quite simply, uh, Graham, walking out there at Celtic Park, who in particular, you and the rest of the guys, there'll be a little bit of a buzz about looking forward to taking on certain players in that team. Um, I think just from watching Celtic, I think the boy Roberts, um, he looks a different class. Uh, obviously, he's a young boy, but he's looked exceptional early doors. So for me, personally, looking at Celtic, I, I see him. Obviously, Scott Brown um, being the fantastic captain that he is and, and how he plays. Uh, he'd be one playing centre mid myself, um, if I'm playing that as. Yeah. Um, he would be one that I would be, I'd be watching and, and obviously looking forward to playing against. Yeah, absolutely. And and the good thing is we've we've got these new shin pads for you for that <laughs> game. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be an interesting battle in the middle of the park. Not forgetting, of course, uh, yourself and Jim Goodwin. Um, listen, uh, great draw for Alawa against Celtic. Here is indeed uh, the draw for the Betfred uh, League Cup quarter final. The last eight, Ruffy. What do you make of it? Celtic Alawa, Morton against Dundee United, Rangers, Queen of the South, and 
Aberdeen against St Johnson. Yeah, we've already spoke about the Celtic game. I think it'll be an occasion for the Alloa boys just to play in the stadium, sample the atmosphere. It's a tremendous stadium to play in. I hope there's a good crowd at it as well. Uh, I think Aberdeen will be happy they've got St Johnson at home rather than at St Johnson. They've already proved at home that uh, they're a hard, hard team to beat. So I, I think that all the ties are very interesting, but I would be keeping my eye maybe on Morton, who mm. seem to be the surprise package just now. Yeah, I had a look at them in uh, midweek against uh, Hamilton Ackies. Again, we're talking about going down uh, the levels. Uh, I mean, I had a, a game I took in a couple of weeks ago as well, Graham, um, was Albion Rovers against Clyde. There's mm. a lot of good football played. People want to play the game the right way. There is. Um, Morton against Dundee United's one. I, I fancy Morton in that, actually. Um, I know Dundee United will be favourites, but Morton have started excellent. Uh, they've got some good players. The boy Michael Tidzers, an excellent player. The um, boy Ross Forbes, a uh, fantastic left foot. So I think um, I think Morton could get to the semi-finals there. And you're right, um, obviously Darren Young at uh, Albion Rovers. He was at Allo with me previously. Um, Daz has done brilliant there, done a great job, uh, get them promoted and um, they're stable in the, in the league as well now and they'll, be, they'll have aspirations to, to get promoted as well. You know, I, I think all teams coming into the league, um, League One this year, will be looking to get promoted. Um, I think if they say otherwise they'll be telling fibs. Yeah, absolutely and uh, well done for your honesty. Now, yeah. we know, now we know what the desire is in that yeah. league and uh, in my tip, Peter Head looks, <laughs> looks doomed and roughy. I'll need to have a word with David Nichols to find out what's happening up there. Um, OK, that's good. Rangers, Queen of the South, a home draw um, for Rangers. I, I thought there was a great line in the, the, the paper from uh, Clint Hill talking about it was a real eye-opener, the reaction to a 1-1 draw against Hamilton and I, I was thinking to myself wow if you hang on another four or five weeks Clint you're about to yeah. see the whole city go completely nuts yeah man I think they'll have to uh, get to grips with that we saw it last year with Celtic had a fantastic season you know one of the run away with the league but every time they had a wee blimp you know everybody was jumping on it no credit to the players they, they dug in and uh, saw the season out so yeah I mean Queen of the South have proved obviously with Hibs that uh, they can shock so they'll have to be at the top of their game yeah what about the games last night Ruffy I mean Celtic dismantled Motherwell yeah we, we spoke about that as like Motherwell either sit in and make it very difficult uh, or, they, or they try and play attacking football and all credit to Mark McGee they went and tried to compete with Celtic and obviously Celtic are so far ahead of them and that's what happens when you play that style of football. I mean, Celtic just picked them off. Some of the goals that they scored were absolutely superb. The Sinclair goal was just fantastic. Uh, but they seem to be on a roll just now. But again, Mark will know that the certain games that he comes into, they're, they're the ones that he needs to win. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, was it a shock for you, St Johnston against Hearts? I think Brad Mackay, it's one of those games you, you score against your old size, always a bit yeah. of a needle in it, and, a, and he'll be going home high as a kite. Yeah, no, I, I, I was impressed with Hearts uh, last week uh, against Celtic, but again, I keep saying St Johnston. I mean, anybody that goes up there, they know they're in for a right battle, and again, that was the case, and uh, they got the wee run of the ball, 10 minutes to go. And then they couldn't come back for it. I mean, Hearts have to bounce back very quickly because everybody's expecting a lot for them this year. Yeah, OK, I'm going to get you guys to put your necks on the line here, OK? Uh, I'm not going to ask you about Celtic Alloa, uh, <laughs> Graham, because that puts you right under pressure. But um, uh, So Morton Dundee United, I think, a shock. Uh, Rangers, Queen of the South? Rangers. Yeah, I think Rangers will win that one. OK, and Aberdeen, St Johnson? Aberdeen. Home advantage, yep, yeah, Aberdeen. Home advantage to edge it there. OK, uh, just before we go to the break, uh, let me tell you, we'll hear from uh, Mark Robertson, the Rangers manager, uh, coming up in the next part of the show. Um, let's talk about some of the transfer dealings. Josh McGuinness finally does uh, leave mm -hmm. Kilmarnock for an undisclosed fee, thought to be around about £200,000. Uh, Ruffy and joins Charlton. Yeah, we think we have to be pleased for Josh. We had him in the show very, very early when they just get... Uh, discarded by Aberdeen. We've had him in the show a couple of times when he was at St Mirren, you know, and he was at a stage his career, didn't know where it was going, couldn't really find a club that he could settle with. And I think he's worked extremely hard, really hard, and I think he's getting the benefits now, obviously, uh, getting to the Euros, and uh, good good luck to him. I hope he does well in yeah. his new club. I mean, that's a, that's particularly what happens in Scottish football now. You know, even lower league clubs in England can cherry pick and pay, pay more money, Graham. Yeah, it's a great move for him. Um, big physical boy. He's obviously worked hard and you know, fair play to him. 
Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great move for him. Yeah, uh, all the best to uh, Josh McGuinness, uh, one of our former guests on the programme. Uh, we're going to talk more about uh, Alawa, some of the players in that lineup uh, at uh, Alawa, and whether they can go all the way in the league. We've got Mark Warburton coming up next as well, uh, discussing Martin Waghorn uh, and the challenge on Celtic, and of course, new signings as well. Uh, join us if you can after the break. Alan Ruff is here with me, Peter Martin, and our book room guest is is Alawa's Graham Holmes. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our boot room guest, Graham Holmes of Alawa, uh, one of those midfielders getting on a little bit in his career, but uh, still uh, battling it out in the midfield with uh, Jim Goodwin his new sidekick, an average age there, Ruffy, of easily close to 70, <laughs> I would say, and Jim won't thank me for that. No, I think any football team with Jim Goodwin uh, on the park would be an inspiration, not only to the players of similar age, but younger players. He's a model professional who's one of these guys, if there's a tackle to be made, he'll make the tackle. I thought he was unfairly criticised a few years that he was... He was going over the ball and all that, I didn't. I think it was just enthusiasm for the game and enthusiasm to win, not only for him but his, his mates run about him and you can see that on the park, that everybody responds to that kind of player. At, at, at your age as well, uh, Graham, you, you've played a long time for Alawa, do mm. you look at someone that, like Jim Goodwin and, and still at this point pick up things? Oh, Definitely. Um, you know, he, he gets a reputation for somewhere well, we know where it comes because he's enthusiastic on the pitch. Like you say, it's just enthusiasm. Um, but he's been different class. I don't know anybody that's got a bad word to say about the man that's actually met him. Um, he's been brilliant since he came in. And obviously seeing him, he, he is the perfect um, role model. You know, he's a perfect pro. Like Ruffy said, he, he's the one. He's doing his press-ups and sit-ups at the end. Yeah. You know, a few of the boys could, wouldn't go far in, in copying him. Um, so obviously I, I see him, he's accomplished a lot in his career, so you know, obviously I can learn. I don't think you're ever too old to start learning. No, absolutely. I'll keep learning, sorry. Bear that in mind, will you, Ruffy? OK, let's crack on to uh, Rangers. I caught up with uh, the Rangers boss, Mark Warburton, today at the uh, press conference. Of course, uh, he was mentioning that uh, Rangers don't need to splash the cash to compete with Celtic. They just need to make sure uh, they get value for money. He was also talking about Martin Wycorn and, of course, uh, that League Cup draw against Queen of the South. No, we, same as last year, whatever's right for the player. It's about the long-term welfare of the player always. There's no point pushing him, especially this stage of the season. If it's the last game of the season, possibly you'd look at it. But no, not at all. It's about his long-term welfare and doing the right thing by him. And we have enough expertise in the building to make sure we make a good decision. I think from our point of view, we've got to, we've got to add value. We've got to show the board, and, and it's important for the club, where the club's been in the last four or five years, I think it's imperative that we show we get value. Now, what that value is, obviously, is, is a big question, but we've got to show that we get value. I look, at, I look at Jordan Rossiter, I look at Joe Dodu as young players, I look at Joey Barton, who would have been in the Premier League with, Bur with Burnley. That, for me, is, is get, us getting value and, and recruiting well. It's not about how much you spend, it's how you spend the money you've got. Most pleasing, it's a home draw. So, looking forward to it. You know, they've, they've had some really good results as well. So, we're conscious of that threat as always. Peter had put out Dundee, so we, we were aware of that and respected the challenge. But we'll prepare well for that game. Again, the, the fact that home draw is really pleasing for us. Well, there is a manager who completely understands the predicament at Rangers and I think it's ideal that he's in harmony with the board on that, Ruffy. Although some fans would love to see Rangers spend a considerable amount of money, that's just not humanly possible at the moment. I think the Rangers fan expected money to be spent. They were led to believe that there was money going to be spent. They were led to believe that there was £30 million there uh, if they wanted it. Uh, they haven't spent it. You know, but the manager has, uh, as he said, went for value for money. I think, uh, from my point of view, taking players on loan and they're going to go back the next year, you know, is not an ideal situation. But that's where Rangers are now. That they, they Did can't, you they honestly can't go expect out. them to go out and start shelling out millions? No, well, if you're going to tell the supporters that, then the supporters believe what they've been told. But fortunately enough, Rangers have the, the season tickets behind them, which looks as if they're financing 
whatever they're doing. Uh, I mean, they're miles behind Celtic. I mean, Celtic can go out and spend four million pound at the drop of a hat. You know, that's where they are just now. And the proof in the pudding will be uh, when they beat when they meet Celtic. You know, we'll see what the the difference is and what the value is that Rangers have got compared to the money that Celtic spent. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I look at the uh, article you did in the newspaper 30 years ago. Um, it was Rangers against Hibs, Graham Souness's opening game of the Premier League that year. Uh, and the whole thing's just gone full circle. Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, I think there's lots of players in that Rangers team uh, have something to prove, particularly when the Celtic game comes up. As we all know, that's the benchmark that we, we set it when these games come around. And it'll be interesting to see uh, the new players. It's always interesting to see the new players, how they, they handle these games. But uh, at the moment, it seems to be Celtic that's uh, firing in all cylinders. Yeah, Graham, we were talking before we uh, came on air about levels of players. And, and uh, I mean, of, of the players that you came up against for Rangers that are still there, are there players that you think they've recruited well, they've done well, they, they're able to cut it at this level as well? I think the big one everyone wants to see is Joey Barton especially against Celtic. Um, he's got undoubted quality. Cranchard as well, um, you know, loads of ability. Um, so, you know, Mark Warburton signed well. Um, I know what you're saying, it's, it's more of a quick fix. They're looking for bringing in loans. Um, but they have signed well. And the team last year, you know, was, was excellent. We played against them, obviously, several occasions. And um, they played very much a different style to what they did beforehand with, with Ali McCoyst. Um, you know, the ball <laughs> never left the deck. You, you'd look at percentage uh, stats after the game and, and it had us with 25% and you just don't know where the 25% came from. They just passed you to death. Um, they, don't, they didn't always win. You know, we managed to get a draw against them a couple of times, but in terms of how they played, it was night and day. Um, and I think he's, he's been a breath of fresh air since he came in, uh, Mark Warburton. I think he's signed well, so I'd expect Rangers to be up there challenging. Yeah, I, I mean, the way I look at it, Rafi, is, is quite simply that in the Premier League, I, and I, I think the quick fix that Graham's talking about, I think they have to look for loan players that they wouldn't get a sniff at under normal circumstances, regardless of whether there's any kind of PR spin and, uh, you know, with potential money being spent. I think he, he's looking at it and thinking to himself, OK, I can't afford to even put out money on a transfer. If he had money for transfers, I, I think the immediate buy would have been Greg Stewart. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the point I was trying to make. And there's obviously been a boardroom decision sitting around the table and saying to the manager, look, we're not going to spend any big money here. We're using your ability to tap into the English market and, and see what you can bring up here. He's certainly bringing players up that have are better than what was there before. So you have to give them credit for that. But I think the Rangers supporters look at the long term. And you can only judge the long term and where Rangers end up this year, you know, and how well they do against Celtic. And uh, as I said... We just have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Um, Martin Wycorn, would you, is he one of those guys that's vital for them for the for the, the, the old firm game or is it a case of just let Joe Dodu come in and, and, and do the business? No, I think he'll be in morning, noon and night, you yeah. know, trying to get himself uh, reasonably fit. He's got a track record. He scored goals last year. Uh, and he's the kind of player, uh, if, if on the team sheet, the, the supporters believe that they've got a chance, it'd be... It'd be Worthwhile trying to get him fit, you know, rather than relying on somebody who's never played in one of these games before. Yeah, what did you make of the manager's statement about uh, the World League uh, that could be, he thinks, in the pipeline over the next few years? Yeah, I'd, I always get, not upset, but I always get uh, worried when the likes of Rangers start talking about being in a bigger picture. We should be concentrating on what we've got. There, there, there are other teams, you know, in our league that we've got to look after the Alawas, the Partick Thistles, the Dundee United. You know, that we should be promoting our game. If things like that are going to happen in the future, they're going to happen. But you've got to be good enough to be invited. Yeah. You know, and I don't think Rangers are there just now. They might yeah. be in three or four years, but at this moment in time, Celtic are getting invited to international tournaments. And I don't see Rangers being invited. Yeah, um, it's only a matter of time um, in the future. I actually think that uh, that will all gather pace. Uh, there's nothing like greed to drive uh, a new format together, let me tell you. Um, OK, before we go, uh, Graham, I've got to ask you about the aspirations of Alawa this season. It, it's a tough league to get out of. It is. Um, like I said earlier, will be well. everybody will be looking to, to get promoted, um, and that's the aim for us. It's no different to anyone else. 
Um, obviously, we want to get promoted by winning the league. Um, whatever way it comes, whether it's through the playoffs, then we'll take it. But we want to win the league. And like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the teams are looking to go up that way as well. Yeah, big problem for you if you win the league, though, is if Jim Goodwin takes his top off at the end of the season, it's going to be mega embarrassing for that entire, <laughs> for that entire midfield. Well, it would be embarrassing for a few. <laughs> um, but no, well, I would love that. Yeah. I, would, I would accept that. I, yeah, I'd accept cool. the embarrassment. Well, listen, we wish you nothing but the best and we're delighted Thanks you come on. Um, six wins out of six, absolutely magnificent for Jack Ross and uh, Graham and, of course, all the Alawa players. Um, join us if you can Monday to Friday. Of course, we always have players from all the divisions in Scotland talking football and interviews as well. Tomorrow night on the programme, we'll see and hear from uh, Michael Halloran. Uh, he was talking to the assembled members of the press as well. And we'll look ahead to the weekend's football across all four divisions of Scotland. It's an extended Friday night programme. Ruffy, Hugh McDonald and myself will be here ready to have a chat with you at seven o'clock. Good night. Bye.